Hey everybody, this is Sloan from Dayglow, and this is a very nice chat with Alex Sintek. For, for someone like you, I'm really fascinated by your story, because um, I know how huge of a deal you are in Mexico, um, and I just want to hear like how everything happened. I guess we can start, yeah, like when, when did you start making music? Since I was uh, very young, uh, it was intuitive, it was spontaneous, and uh, I remember six years old, I, I took a, a guitar, I started playing a guitar with, with my fingers, I didn't know what a chord is, but, uh, but uh, by ear, I started playing and, and, and trying to figure out chords, and I thought that uh, a, a guitar, it was a toy. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought that the, all, all the kids loved that toys, and and it, and it was like really uh, like like something for everyone, everybody. Yeah. I, I never thought that it was it, it was my vocation, and and when when people uh, approach me and ask me, Alex, did I sh should should I uh, work in music? I'm not sure. I always say, if, if you are asking yourself, maybe not, because yeah. you never ask. You never ask that you want to be a musician. You sure. just do it, and 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 I think that you don't choose music. Music chooses you. Sure. It, yeah, it, yeah. I I definitely agree. That's interesting for you to say, because um, I I feel the exact same way. But I grew up. I'm 21 years old now. So when I was 10 years old, I had a lot more access to like music creating software than you probably would have, you know, when you were 10. So what did that look like to you when you started making music? Because I can see you're clearly with all the gear behind you. Um, you're pretty involved in making the music. So when did that start? Well, uh, when I was 10 years old, I, I, I jump from the guitar to the piano because it was more comfortable for me sure. and when i start digging about synthesizers it was an amazing word for me because synthesizers give you the chance to do a, a whole arrangement through the yeah. sequencers and uh, i remember I, my my friends when i was young they called me synteclados and in english mm. means guy without keyboards Oh, nice. <laughs> that, it was a joke because mm -hmm. always when I was at a place with my friends, that uh, with a friend who had piano or organ, hey, lend me your piano, let me play it. And yeah. then he said, you, you don't have keyboards, right? You are uh, like the no keyboards guy, the uh, Sinteclados. <laughs> that's, that's why my name is Alex Sintec, be because it's Sinteclados. Oh, cool. It's it's the, 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 uh, the nickname that I used to have when I was young and sure. then I I start knocking doors in studios uh, as uh, working as, as an assistant mm -hmm. so, so I remember that I I never went to school so I, I went to the studios and and I work you know like uh, organizing cables cleaning instruments and and when I was at the studio, I always ask the engineers and musicians how to do this, how to do that, uh, yeah. how do you use a compressor, how do you use a equalizer. Yeah, uh, I was digging out all the time. <laughs> yeah, so um, and I'm assuming those like weren't plugins; it was the hardware gear like you have behind you. You know, turning the real exactly. knobs and yeah, it, that's cool. In in fact. Uh, I, I was working in this studio and suddenly arrived the app, the first Macintosh Apple uh, computer, and nobody, wow. nobody now knew how to use it. So I, I lied and I said to the owner of the studio, "I, I know how to use this computer. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be the programmer." And and I stayed at night, late late hours at night, uh, yeah. digging out the the the. You know the instructions manual, the the yeah. picking bottoms and pushing was, bottoms. <laughs> was that like the start of MIDI? Exactly. Yeah. Digital instrument digital interface. The, the yeah. MIDI is is the word that connect all the synthesizers together. 
I'm, I'm still working with MIDI these days. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. I'm looking at your um your rack. I can see the Oberheim Matrix oh, yeah. 1000. Do you have two of those? Yeah. Cool. I have a, a white version and a black version. Of, cool. Of, those are uh, uh, analog killer sound. Yeah, I um my studio is just in a room over there and I have the Matrix uh 6, which is like the keyboard version of it. Um That's and very it's awesome. Nice I love it. Yeah. It's a um, strong, a strong, very heavy kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah. So what was like, if synthesizers are what you fell in love with, and that was like the prime time, I'm assuming this is like maybe early 80s this was happening? Mid middle of early 80s, more or less. Yeah. What, what was like the first synthesizer that like got you hooked? Like it just clicked. Well, the first time that I play a keyboard, it was a Casio keyboard. Oh, cool. That a friend had a, a calm and I, I start playing and I, 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 I remember that I choose this uh, synthesizer, bass synthesizer, gong, 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 gong. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, wow, this is amazing. The, the sound of that bass, analog bass, it was, mm -hmm. it was totally killer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Do you remember what it was? Was it like a, a Casio? I know they have like the CZ, like the little exactly ones. C one o one or one something. I don't know oh, yeah. exactly the the, but it was a, a a very very popular synthesizer at that time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's an interesting thing nowadays because like like I was saying, I'm really young, um, but all of this '80s synth stuff is coming back. You know, like I'm a huge synth nerd and I care about like. Um, you know, all the stuff that was made in the early 80s. So part of me is kind of envious for you, like getting to grow up and experience everything like um, happening linearly, like you like seeing it all happen quickly in the technology advance. Um, but then at the same time, you're probably like, well, like these are amazing tools nowadays that you can use. So um, yeah, there's yeah, lots of ways yeah. to look at it. it, it I, I was very lucky to... to, to uh, see and 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 live the evolution of of the technology, yeah. In, in from from the analog to the digital, and I need to I I need to 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 say that the digital is amazing these days, and and the emulations, yeah. the the soft synths are amazing, like yeah. like the Roland Cloud, for example, yeah, that emulates uh, all the vintage gear it mm -hmm. sounds really really uh accurate yeah yeah it's kind of like like frustrating for people who have synths because they're getting so expensive now and then you go and buy one and then like there's a emulation that sounds the same um so, oh, yes. yeah it's crazy well so who were some of your inspirations growing up i i've i've heard that you like were really inspired by new wave and recently, I've okay. kind of been discovering that genre. Um, so, who are some bands that inspired you um, in the early stages of your career? Well, there was this crazy guy called Thomas Dolby. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I love Thomas Dolby. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. Right now, he's a professor at the John Hopkins Institute in Baltimore. He, Whoa. He's uh yeah, he, he's uh. I know that. He's a director of of uh, music technology research at the at the Peabody Institute. That is the the uh, is the, the music school at John, John Hopkins. It's amazing. Oh wow! He and always he, gave off like a mad scientist kind of vibe, so that makes sense. Totally. <laughs> he used to have this huge um, uh, huge hit in the eighties called "She Blinded Me with Science." She's yeah. Like, with science. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Science. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and the way that he programs, the the way that he produces and 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 all the sounds that he uses is is amazing. He's he's one of my heroes. But I have a lot of heroes as well. Herbie Hancock. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the the patch mode music. Nice. Uh, New Order. Orchestra Man mm. Over the Dark, uh, the B-52s, yeah, Alan Parsons, yeah. There are a lot of of old school guys 
and and uh, you know at that time they used to use the synthesizers like like an orchestration of of classical music that's mm -hmm. what i i love a lot yeah not, not the way that djs use it these days so looping repeated repeated repetitive looping kind of yeah. thing but they used to do big orchestra orchestra arrangements so something i'm curious about with your story um is because i was like trying to watch some interviews and kind of see like what you know you've your career started as and something i'm really fascinated by is you kind of brought this brand new culture of like new wave into like spanish music you know because a lot of these bands were english you know speaking and it was all happening in america but you kind of like brought it like a decade after you know so like in the 90s and then yeah so i'm just really fast i think it's super cool uh, and i'm curious like what that was like yeah i i have the the lucky uh thing that i was kind of pioneer in 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 techno music in mexico in latin america because as you say uh the music used to be very conserv conservative like mm -hmm. like mariachi like like uh, ballads and when I start my first albums, everybody saw me like a very alternative thing, like the weird thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, I, I went to the TV shows and and all the hosts were, because I, I used to dress really uh, crazy with mm. a lot of colors, uh, I, I, I love, that kind of stuff. I have this band called The Normal People, Alex Intec y la Gente Normal. Yeah. Uh, Alex Intec and The Normal People. <laughs> and it was sarcastic kind of, yeah. of name. So since you were a pioneer in Mexico doing this, did you feel like like isolated? Were there any other bands kind of doing it as well? Or were you just like on your own? starting the new wave thing no in fact there was some people be before me doing this kind of music but they didn't have luck uh oh. they, they stayed in the underground uh, there was casino changai uh, that it was uh, a, a, an amazing techno band on that time uh there was alchemia a, a girl who used to do music uh, very, very electronic and I remember I, I, uh, Chuck Moll, it was another band very, very popular in the underground, but n nobody of, of them uh, went popular. And, and I have very lucky because my music, I, I have very, very, very um, alternative kind of stuff, but I also have these singles more pop. Yeah. And that's why... I had the, the the chance to be popular, you know. What was, because I'm just always curious, like getting to talk to artists like you. Because I I had I released a song in a very different time where YouTube already exists. There's already all these streaming platforms, so releasing music independently looks really different than it used to, you know. So like, what did it look look like for you? in the age before iPods, you know, like releasing this new music and like getting it out. In the old times, you definitely need uh, a major label company, record company that uh, put an eye on you because it, it was almost impossible to be independent artists. There, there was some independent artists, mm -hmm. but they didn't have any luck and right. There was no windows. There was no platforms. That's why it, it was so hard. And they stay in in, in very small uh, kind of of uh, you know audience. And mm -hmm. uh, I have the luck that uh, on that times I start doing uh, compo uh, songwriting for some famous artists. Yeah. And that's how I start like cl climbing, climbing, and and suddenly. One of these artists recommend me with a A and R director of EMI Music. Oh, cool! So this guy uh, knew me in person, 
And he said, you are like the Mexican Howard Jones, because Howard Jones <laughs> is another guy yeah. that I love in the I electronic can see that. music. And, and I, I like, I like you, that you dare to do new things. And this guy w was from Argentina. And in Argentina, uh, the, the rock music was more challenging than in Mexico mm -hmm. on that times. So that's why I think this guy uh, look at me in a different way. And he decides to, to sign me in the record company. My first album was, was a fail. Uh, popular fail. It, it was it was the first try, but in the second album, I I, I have uh, three uh, very uh, strong hits in the radio. Yeah, and that was my game changer for my career. <laughs> yeah, that's in, awesome. I'm talking in 1993. Oh, cool, man! <laughs> so I was born six years later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So That's I'm assuming crazy. I'm assuming in th those times, like what it looked like to have career success was like radio and touring, right? Like, were you out on the road? In Mexico, it's not like in United States that you can say, yeah. "Okay, I'm gonna do a tour uh, in that territory. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the east. I'm gonna go to the e west or the south or the north." In Mexico, you go wherever they hire you. You can yeah. go one day in a city that is totally at north of the country, and the other day totally at south of the country. <laughs> and you, and, and you, I remember we we went hours and hours in the in in, in the highway. <laughs> it was That's very crazy, very crazy, totally like like you know like a bow. Uh, going around around boom 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 all over the country so i'm curious what your process making music looks like um like how do you start a song go with it finish it because it seems like you're pretty involved musically um just totally. what that looks like well i'm 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 very intuitive as long i i i like to start with rhythm sometimes uh, I start with, with uh, programming some rhythm in, in the computer and then I go finding chords in my piano and then we I, I start doing melodies saying nothing like la da 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 and when I like the melody and the chords and and that inspire me to to talk about a, a, a topic Mm -hmm. then I start writing a letter a lyric but uh, that's that's the, the the final step when I write a song uh, the, the 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 lyrics I I know that some composers start with the lyrics and then the music but yeah but the opposite it's mm -hmm. weird I, I don't know why and yeah. when I'm working I'm always uh, doing the arrangement at the same time mm. uh, it's it's very, very, it's not very usual that I go to the piano and, and, and do the song with piano and voice just like that. Sure. Unless it's a, a very strong ballad, a classic mm. ballad. Yeah. I have this, this song, Te Soñé. I, I did this song uh, with piano and voice. This is a, a very uh, famous song of, of my career. And yeah. uh, I did that song with just the piano and my voice, but it's not yeah. very crucial for me. <laughs> I, I'm the same way where I think about all of the parts at once and songs have to like exist with all of the parts, you know? Um, but I feel like... It, yeah, it's a, it's a different feeling when you can sit down at one instrument and write the whole song. Um, so that's really special. Yeah, it's two different ways. And and sometimes it works with the piano and voice, but suddenly I like to be very playful with my sequencer and, and the computer. 
because I, I can imagine how the whole arrangement will be. And that helps me a lot. For someone like you who's been making music for a long time and you experienced like the 80s and 90s trends and you're a part of them, there's a new revival of like artists like Dua Lipa or The Weeknd or like anybody on the pop charts where there's this 80s Bruno like well. Bruno, yeah, yeah, Silk Sonic and everything going on. That's true. Um, where everything's like 70s, 80s revival. And I'm just curious as a veteran, you know, like what, what do you think about all that? I love it. I, I, I think that um, the, the new kind of music like trap or, or the reggaeton music that is uh, all over Latin America, mm -hmm. it doesn't challenge me, you know? It's, mm. it's the kind of music that it's so repet repetitive, so uh, the same thing, the same thing. <laughs> I I don't vibe with that kind of of, of style. Sure. It, I'm I'm very sorry. I know that it's very popular. I don't either. No. Yeah. We're on but the I, same team here. <laughs> I have trouble to connect with that music. I think it, it vibes too dark for me. And I love yeah. the happy music. And I love yeah. the uh when when these new kind of star uh, stars like Dua Lipa, like Bruno Mars, uh Ellie Goulding, uh, Sara Barrieles. Uh, I love that kind of artist who, who plays with the music with a, a nice vibe, you know, like happy yeah. vibes and mm -hmm. more light. Yeah, I, th I think that's generally why it's coming back because pop music has for the last couple of years just been oddly dark. Like, just very strangely, like, Impressive. dark. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. And, I like, I'm the same. Like, I understand there's a time and place for sad music, but it's interesting. You would think, like, inevitably, like, the happy music would be on the pop charts, but it's it wasn't for a while. So it's interesting that it's coming back. Sometimes I, 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 I think if, if the, the world sometimes is kind of cruel, the things that happens to us, the, the, the pandemic, the quarantine, all these diseases, all this uh, violence that we are living in these days. Uh, I think that the aggressive music doesn't, doesn't help a lot. Mm -hmm. But the music that gives you hope, the music that gives you uh, a different kind of vibe can help you to to wake up, to, to feel better, you know? Yeah. I have the same perspective on um, music because I think music is a very, um, it all it is is emotion. You know, it's, it's a very rooted, powerful emotion uh, generator practically. And especially with how much music we listen to now, um, we're like, we constantly have headphones in and um, people say that like they're living in a movie and this is like their soundtrack. Um, I think it's really important what we listen to. Um, much more important than I think we're being sold. You know, like music is, it is important. You know, it, it matters what you listen to. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and if, if you are sad, if you are depressive and you start listening to music that puts you in a very low frequency, uh, it's worst. <laughs> I mean, mm. yeah, it doesn't help at all. And yeah. uh, I, I sometimes I, I, I ask myself, uh, what can we do to to uh, improve to the world, the 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 you know the 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 good vibes for the world. Sure. And I think that doing nice kind of music music that talks about love sacrifice about compassion it helps a lot i i have i have this song called uh, corazones invencibles mm -hmm. corazones invencibles por la fuerza del amor that says uh, uh, by the power of love the the heart are invincible and mm -hmm. and it talks about never lose hope and People love to write me to my Facebook, to my Twitter, Instagram, 
thanks Alex for that song. You helped me a lot because I, I had cancer and yeah. your song inspired me to, to be strong. And that's an amazing pay for for the effort of, of a song, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have I have the same goal with the music that I make. I want to make music that like inspires people and gives them an alternative. It's because like everything in pop culture is like kind of pointing to a pessimistic view nowadays, you know, whether it's the news or anything, because I guess it instills fear. And so people watch it because they're worried. I, I don't know. But I feel like nowadays optimism is like the alternative, you know, it's like giving people um, a chance that maybe there actually is hope, you know, so it's cool hearing that you feel the same way. When I was very young, I used to listen a lot to the Beatles. Yeah. And I think that the the, the magic of, of that band that is, is an eternal band because it never, it will never won't die mm -mm. because their music were so positive and talk about peace and talk about loves. And I think, it was very transcendental, and and uh, we ne we need to never give up. I yeah. think, as a humankind, something I've noticed about the Beatles era of um, '60s and '70s music that I don't see anymore. Um, I'm curious what you think about this, but uh, it was very us oriented like all the music directed a group of people. And nowadays music is very ego centered, you know, like a lot of the um, pop music is about the self and the self. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I think there's too much of it. Too you know, much. I think that we're being reminded of ourselves too much. Whereas the Beatles or, um, you know, name any other hippie band um, where they're talking about like uh, collective unity and just lyrically how important that distinction is. You're right. There's so many lyrics about sex, power, and money. Sex, power, yeah. and money all the time. And, yeah. and it's, it's awful. It's, it's very sad. I, mm. I, I see all these artists like uh, kind of showing off a lot of money, yachts, uh, girls. Yeah. And I mean... When the rock and roll star stars used to do that in the eighties, they were m more playful. Like like they were doing like a a comic kind of stuff, uh, yeah. you know, like 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 a cartoon of themselves. But right now, these days, it's more serious. It's more like yeah, very. Real. I mean it. I'm mm -hmm. I'm the powerful one. And just, yeah, hey, come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Go down. Take it easy, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like we've lost concern about like inflating our egos. It's like na nowadays, like everyone deserves to inflate their ego. And I I'm not saying anything against like self worth. Like I hope everyone, you know, can get to a place where they feel confident with themselves and um, feel self confidence. But I think the narrative that everyone's being sold by the ego centered music is actually like, not helping you know it's doing the opposite it's exactly. um which we, is is um sad to see yeah we, we need to have empathy even in the music we need to have empathy with with, with yeah. the rest of the the people and and uh, i i like to be spiritual in my song sometimes you know i have some songs that talk about faith and uh i'm not a religious guy uh i don't believe that the religion the, the religion uh it's like the only way to contact with a high how higher power but i think that music comes from a higher power and and sure and, and when when i'm when i'm working and sometimes i get inspired to do a song it's like like I go out of my body. It's it's like mm -hmm. a trip, and I love that you know because sometimes 
I, I write a song and the next day I listen to the song and I say, wow, what, where did that come from? <laughs> I, I really don't know, but I know that it was a higher power that gives me that light in that moment, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's very spiritual for me. So for, for me, the creativity is a spiritual uh, kind of thing. Yeah, some, sometimes I'll like make a song like, what happened? You know? <laughs> uh, can you imagine if I'm talking about I have all the money, I have all, I have all the power, I'm the powerful one. What, to whom I connect, connect with that kind of stuff? <laughs> what, what, is my, what kind of higher power I have? You know, it's like, mm -hmm. come on. That's yeah, too well, hard. it's the self. The the uh, the music's saying that the higher power is the self, you know, um, yeah. Which You're is, right. I mean, I guess some people believe that, but I, you know, lean more towards your uh, philosophy there. Um, it goes yeah. beyond ourselves, and I I find a lot of freedom and happiness in that. Um, personally, life is it changes all the time, and and now I I remember when I was young, uh, I was trying to eat the world. <laughs> Mm -hmm. all the time but now that i have kids now that i, I have a, a a young daughter 15 years old uh, yeah. a young, uh son 12 years old my son and i i'm worried about what kind of world i'm i'm gonna uh give them sure. in the future you know so i don't yeah. want to to be part of something dark i want to be part of something positive pro mm -hmm. For them as a 21 year old and like we're talking about all the things that have shifted in culture i'm sure you've seen since you started as an artist a lot change over time um i guess kind of two questions in one like what has that been like seeing pop culture shift in that dark way and then two what advice would you give to um like younger listeners or artists on how to um, keep that optimism? Well, I think we need to, to, to think about how was in, in the old times, uh, we, we didn't have social media. We didn't have likes or views yeah. or people who, 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 who vote for, for, for uh, approve our, our music. Yeah. So in the old times, the artist used to challenge himself and challenge audience to listen to new things and 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 it was a, a different uh kind of uh motive uh mobile um and these days a lot of artists are seeking views and seeking popularity and mm -hmm. seeking likes and that's make us like like uh, kind of um, um, you know like you need the the the, the uh, approvedness all the time of an audience that that doesn't yeah. that doesn't help. So I think the new the new generation needs to be to have a lot of freedom and you you should not care about what the people think about you. Mm -hmm. You just need to like yourself and be yourself and forget about what is on fashion or, or mm -hmm. what is the most popular thing. Be yourself is, is the best way to be. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for Thanks, talking Sloan. to me. This has been so fun. Um, just getting to pick your brain and hear about your story and everything that's gone on. It's been definitely an honor getting to you know have an hour out of your day. No, it's my pleasure, my friend. Yeah. So, uh, it's great to to cross over uh, cultures with uh, it. I, I think it's the second or the third English interview language that I have. So it's oh amazing. wow, <laughs> man! Well, yeah, I'm definitely honored. Um, that's that's awesome. Well, so I I end every podcast with the same question, um, and it's one I'm just like trying to learn myself um, and we've kind of touched on it uh, throughout the interview what does it mean to be an artist and what is your responsibility as one 
Well, for me, being an artist is uh, it's a, a very, very important responsibility uh, because it's it's a commitment with myself, mm-hmm. and I need to be honest with myself, and and I I I need to be uh, congruent with that, what, what, what what I think, what I feel, what I say. It, it needs to be connected. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think if if I'm doing that, I'm on the right way, on the right path, and uh, I think gratitude is very important as well, because no not everybody can uh, live from music, mm-hmm. and I feel myself very lucky and with a lot of gratitude, and and I I try to 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 give back a little bit of that joy to the people, to the audience. So sure. I'll do my best. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a great answer. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. So <laughs> thanks for, um, yeah, thanks for chatting. And if you're ever in Austin, Texas, um, let's go get dinner or something. That'd be fun. Of course. Let's <laughs> have some, some food together, my friend. Mm-hmm.